change. And in fact, that occurred during this period of time. Mm, I'm not so sure. Paul Callan is a professor of media law, Seton Hall University. Matthew J. O'Connor is a defense attorney. They both join us. This is the all Irish uh, legal <laughs> panel. Callan and O'Connor. I'm not there Irish. Top of the morning to you, Greggy. Top of the afternoon. <laughs> Wake up, pal. You just got out of bed. <laughs> all right, uh, Paul. The workplace is. It, it's not your home where there is an expectation of privacy. Here are the things that you can do in a workplace. Drug testing, personality, uh, psychological profiles, closed circuit video. I mean, your boss can monitor your email, your voicemail, your telephone conversations. But Paul, what about this hidden camera? Well, you know, it's interesting, Greg. 13 states in the United States now have laws banning the use of hidden cameras in private places. But the question is here, well, first of all, uh, Oregon, by the way, where this happened, is not one of those states. And um, the question also is, is this a private or a public place? Was there an expectation of privacy? The law has generally held that if you are in a place where somebody could look at you with their own eyes, then it's not illegal for somebody to film you with a camera because you don't have an expectation of privacy. You know, Matthew, obviously there is an expectation of privacy in the workplace, in the bathroom, or maybe even right. a locker room where people see needs of privacy to change out their clothes and so forth. Um, what about here, though? I mean, I, I know I, I we, ha we have the soundbite of the guy who said, well, people close the door and change their clothes, but it was still an area where other people could be. Well, first of all, people need to understand there are three major issues here. Number one, the Fourth Amendment protects us from unreasonable search and seizures from the government. It doesn't say anything about private individuals. Secondly, the cases that have been analyzed break this down into two groups, public and private, just like Paul said. Mm -hmm. So we're dealing with police officers here. So and that's the reason public. I think, yeah, that's public. And I think it's very important to understand in this particular setting where you've got the, 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 the blue wall, so to speak, where you have officers who may not be inclined to tell on each other, so to speak, because of the environment that they're in. I'm not saying that's bad. It's probably a good thing in some ways. And they're trying to find out who's doing the misdeeds, the harassment in this case. I think right. it is legitimate and necessary. Well, look, Boy, I'll it, say, you know, go ahead, Paul. Go ahead. Well, no, I, you know, the thing that gets me about this case is, and I, you know, I think we're, we're in a brave new world now with these tiny hidden cameras, the ability to record people where they never could imagine themselves being recorded. And here you have a situation where political correctness meets Big Brother. Mm -hmm. I mean, on the one hand, sexual harassment, you know, the political correctness people, it, you know, they want to crush it and it, they think it's a horrible widespread problem and and it is a problem so how do they investigate it they're putting secret cameras in the ceiling now and uh, and videotaping people so you know I think it's really uh, it's an example of government overreaching yeah. and while it might not be illegal it's certainly not a good you way know, to deal with your employees Matthew I'm glad